Hey guys, it's me, it's Queen Osset Haru, and thank you for joining me for another wonderful edition of Ask an Aquarius. If you haven't already, please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell. All right, guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and pass it on to somebody else who may like it as well. Also, when we're done, please go to the comment section because I'm going to give you guys a question. Today I'm doing a Q&A. And I'm going to answer a question and I'm going to ask you guys to answer the question too, because I think you guys will like this question. So just sit tight and listen to today's Q and A, and then you can answer a question for us as well. The first question for today's Q and A says, um, since I've been in Costa Rica, have I seen any exotic animals? Now I am in Costa Rica. I'm almost always here. Um, I go to Panama, I go to Colombia, um, I'm actually going back to Cartagena, um, I really want to see it again, it was so much fun. I like Medellin too. Um, sometimes I'm in the States, which I really don't like that much, but sometimes I have to go for different reasons or family things or um, something that they don't have here, such as Harry Potter, <laughs> Wizarding World or something like that. So sometimes I'm in different places, but 98% of the time I'm in here in Costa Rica, but I'm not in the, um, the rainforest, the jungle, like my mom would say. Um, I'm not in the rural part of Costa Rica. I am in the city part of Costa Rica. So I'm very close to the airports, the hospitals, you know, the, the post office, which is why I moved here. When I first came here, I was living in the mountains and the mountains are beautiful. I would love to still be in the mountains, but for my life, it just wasn't convenient. It wasn't convenient to get to the things I needed to get to or get the things I needed to get, such as supplies. Even going to the market, it took 15 minutes for Uber to even find me. So it wasn't the most convenient location. So I moved a few times, I bounced around a little bit and I ended up right here, not far from San Jose. So I don't see many animals. Here we have a lot of birds. Sometimes you see butterflies and the butterflies are very friendly in Costa Rica actually, more friendly than they are in the States. Um, and that's it. I know that there are some sloths where I came from in the mountains, they kept telling me they would see sloths. Um, and uh, some people have talked about snakes and crocodiles, but I haven't seen any of these things. The only thing I've seen is butterflies and birds. <laughs> now, I'm not a real big animal person, so that's not something I really would seek out. But if I wanted to see monkeys or any of those kind of things, I could just simply go to the rainforest or any of the different areas, the wildlife preserves, there's a dog park but I'm not really an animal person. So if you're an animal person and you want to see stuff like that, Costa Rica does have those things to offer. The next question says, uh, which of the Harry Potter films is my favorite and why? I have seen all of the Harry Potter films and now I'm listening to the audiobooks because as any Potterhead will tell you, they left a lot out of the movies. But most of that was because of the interest of time. So my favorite Harry Potter movie, because I like the movies and the books equally, my favorite Harry Potter movie is The Deathly Hallows, part one. This is the last uh, of the, the last two films. The, the last film was broken into two parts. I like part one the most. And the reason why people always say, why, why do you like that one the most? And they're all good. I like that one the most because that is what caused me to fall in love with the Harry Potter series, that last movie. Because before that, I really did like it. I thought it was a delightful tale, but I wasn't as in love with it as you guys know I am now. And that's because of Professor Snape. Professor Snape, who's tattooed on my arm right here, it's hard to see it because of the angle, but I have a silhouette of him tattooed on my arm. And um, Professor Snape is what made me fall in love with the Harry Potter series because I really related with him. 
And in the Deathly Hallows part one, we find out that Professor Snape is not evil, that he's not, you know, this negative energy, that he's actually pretending to be um, negative and nasty to the kids and all that kind of stuff because he's working as a double agent for the wizarding world. So that really endeared me. I was like, oh my God. And he ends up giving his life for the wizarding world. So I just thought it was the most beautiful thing in the world. And in that particular movie, when we find this out, Dumbledore says to him, um, he's asking him, why does he help Harry? He's like, have you grown to care for the boy? And he says something to him. And then he says, Lily Evans? Because Lily Evans is Harry's mother. And Snape did everything he did because he was in love with Harry's mother. He risked his life. He did everything because he was in love with Lily. And Lily married another man and then she died. And, you know, life has gone on and Snape is still in love with Lily. And I really related to that because I feel like if you love somebody, even if it's not the right person, sometimes that love lingers and it can linger years, decades, you know, half a century even. And um, he says to him, he's like, Lily Evans? Like Dumbledore is even surprised, like after all this time? And Snape is like, always. Like always, there's nobody that he ever loved. So it just touched my heart. That scene really touches my heart. And that is what made me fall in love with Harry Potter. And that's why to this day, when you see me, I have all this Harry Potter stuff around me and I'm, you know, listening to the books or I might go to the Wizarding World and I'm like really into, you know, talking in different groups about the, the, um, the different character plots and themes and things like that. And I love watching the movies, even the new ones that have come out that were prequels to the Harry Potter series. I like them too. And a lot, and it all started with me loving Snape. I adore Snape. And it's funny because Snape is a Capricorn and I don't have the most close relationships with Capricorns, but I adore him. I did adore my grandmother and she was a Capricorn too. So there's some, some um, crossover there. But anyway, that's why I love Harry Potter and that's why I love that particular movie. And that's how I fell in love with Professor Snape because I really identified and understood him. When he said that, it was like, he only said one word, always. And it hit me right in the heart. And I was like, gotcha. That's all he had to say. And I totally understood him from that point on. Then it says, what part of Africa did you go to and what were your experiences in Africa? I went to Ghana, West Africa. And I went to Ghana, West Africa because 87% of the enslaved Africans who were stolen from the continent were stolen from West Africa. And I wanted to go back. I wanted to see my family's roots, the roots of my ancestors. And I didn't have much to go on as far as family history. All I knew was that 87% of us came from a certain region. So I went to that region and enjoyed the food and the hospitality and the dance and took classes there and had a wonderful time. I even started to see a man while I was there. This was in 1999 and um, I realized I ended up leaving this man because I realized that I wasn't in love with him. I was in love with the idea of taking my bloodline back home. I wanted to take my bloodline back home. So I, my family, our ancestors were stolen from this place and I just wanted to take that back, like kind of reclaiming what was stolen from us. And I realized that that's what it was all about. It really wasn't a love of him. It was a love of that. So I ended up leaving him because I was like, I don't even like him. <laughs> like I just, it kind of like this one day I realized that I was like, you don't even like him. You like the thought of this. 
So I left it alone and I moved on with my life. And I loved um, Ghana. Ghana was cool. I had a great time in Ghana. Ghana is a beautiful place. There aren't any animals in Ghana. West Africa is all culture and dance and festivals and things like that. So I had a wonderful time there. I have a lot of jewelry and clothes from there that I still wear all the time. And I went in 1999. So I'm sure it has built up a lot since then. And I haven't gone back. And I haven't gone back because Ghana put some laws on the books after against homosexuality. And I'm too gay. <laughs> I'm too, I am a lesbian with a capital L. And I'm too much so to be in any country that outlaws sexuality. I'm gonna get arrested. We all, let's keep it real. We all know, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get locked up, okay? So um, I stay away from places that have those types of laws so I can stay out of jail. But I had a good time while I was there and um, I really intended to go back. So now I have to look at the continent and see who's more liberal before I ever go back. Now, this is the one I want you guys to answer in the comment section if you so choose. The question says, if you could be any other sun sign, which would you choose and why? So if you have time, please answer that in the comment section. I would love to hear what sun sign you would like to be. When a young lady asked me this question, I pondered it. And I thought about all 12 of the Zodiac signs. And honestly, there isn't one I would want to be. If I had to pick right now, I would pick Aquarius again. Because I love the freedom of being Aquarius. And I don't feel like I would get that freedom in any other sun sign. Maybe Sagittarius, because I have a Sagittarius moon. So maybe Sagittarius might give me that freedom because Sagittarius have that wanderlust. But um, honestly, I don't really want to be a Sag. <laughs> I don't want to be anything other than an Aquarius. So um, if I had to come back again and they said choose, I would choose Aquarius. Now, if they said I couldn't choose Aquarius, then I would go with Sag or maybe even Libra. I would do Sag before Libra because Libra is my second favorite sign. Aquarius is number one. Libra is number two. But I think it's hard to be a Libra. I think it's hard to maintain the balance. So that's why I would probably pick Sag before Libra. It seems like it's easier to be a Sag than a Libra. It seems like the fire is something that you have to contend with and they don't seem to make commitments easy but i'm used to that being an aquarius so i think i would try sag before i try anything else so how about you if you could choose your sun sign which would you choose and why the next question says is friday the 13th evil yesterday was friday the 13th i was born on february 13th so for me, 13 has always been a good number. Now, some people say, why does 13 have this bad reputation? 13 has a horrible reputation. There are some buildings, if you go to old buildings, and in the United States especially, if you go, there's some old buildings that don't have a 13th floor. They won't have a, a room number 13. It'll go 12 and then 14. And why is this? Because 13 was considered to be bad luck. Why is Friday the 13th and 13 in general considered to be evil or bad luck? Well, got to understand something. The early church was where the demonization of pagans began. And the early church learned different things. And one of the things was, was that Covens often had 13 members, not all of them, not every time, but it was very common to have 13 members. So because of that, and because the Knights Templar in, um, in the old days, in the ancient old days, there used to be a group called the Knights Templar, and many of them were massacred on Friday the 13th. So 13, because of some historical reasons, has gotten a bad rap. But it's really not anything evil about the number 13. I've never had bad luck personally. 
And remember, 13, 3 plus 1 is 4. And 4 is considered to be a good number, especially for families. So don't be afraid of the number 13. There's nothing evil about it. There's nothing negative about it. And to be honest with you, I've never had a bad Friday the 13th. I've never had a Friday the 13th where anything happened. I think it's just made popular by the movie, the movies. And I think it's made popular by the smear campaign by the ancient church, the old church. So like I said before, if you say 13, like me, my birthday is on February 13th. My grandmother had 13 children that survived. So when you hear 13, a lot of people are like, ooh, you know, they're like, you know, putting up their hands, thinking it has something to do with negativity when it really doesn't. It's just, a, like I said, it's a very old superstition that was very popular and even got into the psyche of a lot of people. But there's nothing evil or negative about the number 13. And the last question says, does Voldemort know about Ask and Aquarius? Now, you guys know, and some of you who are new here don't know, Voldemort is what I call a evil ex. <laughs> this is an ex who was either uh, narcissistic, abusive, I mean evil. Not just an ex that got on your nerves, but a, an ex that's evil. And many of us have had those kinds of exes. As a matter of fact, I often question if my Voldemort was possessed by the devil. I still question that, to be honest with you. And maybe not possessed by the devil in the old-fashioned sense, but got like a bad spirit on him. Because my, not my Voldemort, but the Voldemort that I was dealing with has a very negative vibration that makes me nauseous. It always did. So I don't know. I don't know if he knows about asking Aquarius because I don't talk to him. The last time I spoke to him was about two years ago. And I told myself never to waste my time talking to somebody so fucked up ever again. Um, he is, he's exactly the same. He does the same thing every time. He comes around. He pretends to be a better person. He pretends like he's doing well and caring about people. He has women and guys that he has believing his stories and fabrications and mental manipulations. And then he'll come to me and brag about how stupid they are for believing him, which to me is the epitome of evil. And um, then very quickly, because I'm... I usually just kind of go along. I'm like, oh, okay, good. I'm glad you're doing good. That's what's up. I usually just kind of give it lip service. And then eventually during the course, because we'll have more than one conversation and he can't keep it up past one or two conversations. The crazy always comes back out. The negative, the evil always comes back out and he can't hide it. And my stomach don't lie. <laughs> my vibrations do not lie. So it always comes back out. So I told myself after the last time, the last time I had a really hard time shaking his bad energy. I had to, you know, use Palo Santo. I had to use frankincense and myrrh. And that's when I really started to realize that whenever I talked to him, and it's been, all, it's always been like this. I even said it to him. He used to get angry about it, but it's always been like this. I always get nauseous around him. And that's not a good sign. Cause I don't get nauseous around anybody. Now I've been around other people who were negative. I've been around other people who weren't too cool, but I've never been nauseous. So there's something about him in my opinion that's evil. And that's, people always look at me crazy when I say that, but I'm like, I feel it. It's something and I feel it. So I told myself that last time not to speak to him anymore because it took me so long to shake that vibration. And also I felt like all the times that I talked to him since we had, you know, stopped dealing with each other, I was always hoping that he would be better, you know, that he would have gotten some help, that he'd be in a better space, that he would be doing well. And every time I talked to him, it's worse. It's worse. It's like he just sliding down. So I told myself the last time that because it took me so long to shake off the vibration and because he's getting worse and worse and worse, that is no point in checking to see if he is okay. 
like just let God deal with that. <laughs> like I don't pray for him. I don't think about him. The only time I even talk about him is when I ask an Aquarius. Any other time I just kind of brush his memory away. So I don't know if he knows about asking Aquarius. If asking Aquarius um, reaches any level of popularity, I mean, I have like 7,000 subscribers, which is still a very small channel. But let's say asking Aquarius was 700,000. Um, I'm sure at some point in time, somebody will say something or, because uh, none, nobody that knows him knows me, except for a handful of people. So it's possible somebody could see Asking Aquarius and he could come across it. But that's why I don't use his name and I talk about him, you know, I call him Voldemort and I talk about him based on his Zodiac sign because he's the kind of person who would love to sue me, <laughs> love to. And I'm just like, okay, prove I'm talking about you. <laughs> prove to the judge I'm talking about you and then we'll talk lawsuits. So um, basically, that's the way that it goes. Um, I don't know, and I really don't care because like I said before, it's not like it would make a difference if he did or not. Voldemort is the kind of person who will never get better. He'll never admit his faults. And this is what I was telling you guys the other day when I said the first thing you have to do to heal is get real with yourself about yourself. Voldemort lies to himself about himself and then surrounds himself with people who believe the lie. And this is the real psychotic part because he surrounds himself with people who believe the lies about himself, that he's this great person. So that when somebody like me shows the truth, they think I'm crazy or I'm lying or I'm scorned or I'm bitter, you know? But honestly, I don't even have to say anything. Because other people that I know who met him, you know, outside of me, always ask me what the hell is wrong with him. And I just smile because I'm like, he can't hide it. He can't hide that crazy. So that's what I was saying before. You have to get real with yourself. And if you're lying to yourself about who you are and then surrounding yourself with people who are going to perpetuate that same line and pat you on your behind and tell you, no, you're great. You're a great person, you know, because they're emotionally manipulated by you. You're never going to get better. So I had to realize the last time I spoke to him that he's never going to get any better. Um, from what I understand of him, and I don't know very much about his background, just what he said, but from what I understand of him, there are some mental health issues, but I just feel like it goes deeper than that. I feel like there's some spiritual issues there too. There's some type of negative spirit on that boy because he, he, he not right. And I'm not just talking about a negative person, a bad person, a jacked up person. I'm talking about a person that makes me feel physically uncomfortable when I'm around them. There's something there. Sociopath, psychopath, possessed, something. There's something seriously wrong there. So, like I said, I don't know if he knows about asking Aquarius. And I really don't care. As long as he stay away from me. I'm cool. <laughs> I'm good. As long as he keep him and his disturbing, negative, and yucky, uh, low vibrational, demonic energy way over there, I'm good. You know? And um, if he did, you know, come to ask an Aquarius and leave a comment or something like that, I'm going to just block him. You know, that's what I do whenever he pops up. I just block him. Because, like I said before, um, those kind of vibrations are never good. All right, guys, it's time for me to get going. So if you like today's video, remember to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to answer the question if you want to in the comment section about your sun sign. If you would like to get a reading done, please email me and I'll give you an appointment. And all my information will be underneath this video. So if you would like to get in touch with me on social media or if you would like to hit me up because, oh, the other thing is, is that I'm getting ready to record the witch trials for this week. So um, this is the only video I'm uploading here and the other one I'm going to upload to my Patreon page. So if you wish to see this week's episode of the witch trials, which is where I'm putting the movie uh, Suspiria on trial. So if you would like to see that, 
And this was a really disturbing, gory movie. This was a trip. This was a real trip. This is probably going to be one of my most interesting um, reviews on The Witch Trials. So if you're interested, please go to my Patreon page, sign up to be a patron so that you can see every week's episode of The Witch Trials. All right, guys, thank you for being here. Come back soon because I have a lot more to say. See you later.